Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Advent Lutheran Church on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, it's good to see you all here. My name is Pastor Matt. A uh, couple announcements this morning. Uh, first off, last night we had our holiday concert uh, with uh, Detrimental, uh, Mike Detra, our music director, his, his group. Um, I unfortunately, I was planning to be there, but I unfortunately was unable to be there. Uh, but from what I've heard, it was a wonderful concert. Uh, folks who were here really enjoyed it. We had over 40 people here. Uh, thank you to everyone who helped make that happen, uh, provide refreshments, um, uh, and especially uh, to Mike and um, uh, to wonderful musicians that you know and we benefit from knowing. So thank you. So, um, other announcements. Uh, there are still, uh, we're still doing the gift certificates for uh, the Warminster Food Bank. Uh, again, this is a time of year of great need, and uh, the, the gift certificates, gift cards, are a, a great way that the food bank can help families that are in need beyond just their food needs, that, that when, when you're hurting to get food, you're also hurting to get other things as well. And so um, uh, we're asking folks to purchase gift cards and to, uh, in denominations, no greater than 25. So if you decide to give more than $25, uh, if you, you can purchase two gift cards for 25. Um, and that gives the food bank the ability to distribute cards to a greater number of people. And if a family is in great need, they can give multiple cards uh, to different establishments to meet their various needs. So. Um, please, please give generously to that. Um, the worship schedule for the next two weeks, we've got Christmas on Saturday. Christmas Eve services are at 7 and 9 p.m. Uh, so we've got that Christmas Eve. And since Christmas Eve is on a Saturday, that means Christmas, obviously, is on Sunday. Normally, we don't have a Christmas Day service here at Advent, but because Christmas Day lands on a Sunday, we will have a Christmas Day service, and it will be one service at 9 a.m. And since Christmas lands on a Sunday, it just so happens seven days later, New Year's Day lands on a Sunday. Um, and so council has decided that we will do one worship service on New Year's Day as well, uh, at 9 o'clock, uh, 9 a.m. Um, December 26th, I will be taking two weeks worth of vacation. I will be back uh, uh, in the office on January 9th. Uh, Pastor Nathan Krause at Redeemer uh, Lutheran Jameson will be candle uh, covering pastoral emergencies for me. Um, and uh, Gail Oynes will be leading worship on um, New Year's Day, and uh, George Henry will be leading worship on, I guess that's the 8th or the 7th. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not here, so I'm on vacation. So whatever that next Sunday is, the 8th, yes. Um, he will be leading worship on the 8th. Um, any other announcements that need to be made? All right. I'm going to beat them to it. Ha ha. All right. Um, for uh, the uh, prayers of intercession later on in the worship service, um, are there any names uh, of folks to add to the prayers of intercession later on in the worship service? Hans? Okay. Victoria? John. Noah. George. Yep. Matt and Amy.
Peter. And then we've got the names from the first service as well. Ah, and it is cool in here. Um, obviously, the heat is not, I think it was on for the first service. Uh, so, so I apologize. I'm not, I don't have a good explanation as to why. We'll figure it out. But even if we were to turn on the heat this very moment, this room would not get warm until after we left anyway. So um, we'll <laughs> make sure it's working better for next week. So uh, please rise as you are able for the uh, opening of our worship with the confession and forgiveness on the opening page of our bulletin. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things, Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign we have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on the cross of Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the name of the Lord. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Awesome. 
Blessed are you, God of hosts, for you promised to send a son, Emmanuel, who brought your presence among us, and you promised through your son, Jesus, to save us from our sin. As we light these candles, turn again to us in mercy. Strengthen our faith in the words spoken by your prophets. Restore us and give us life that we may be saved. O house of David, come, let us rejoice, for the Son of God, Emmanuel, comes to be with us. Amen. Dayspring, come and cheer our spirits by your advent here. This verse, the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, I'm Jeannie Griska, and Rose Herbert is with us in the back, and we have Emma, Timothy, and Juliana, who will teach us our children's sermon for today. Just relax. <laughs> okay, we're gonna bring to life the manger story in poetic form. Do you know why we celebrate Christmas by giving presents? We celebrate by giving gifts to family and friends to let them know how much they're loved before the old year ends. Behind this Christmas custom lies a true and simple tale of how God gave his son to us to show his love won't fail. About 2,000 years ago, God thought he'd put on earth a savior for mankind who would, like us, arrive through birth. His name would be called Jesus, and his destiny would be to rise from earth on Easter morn, from sin to set us free. God chose a girl named Mary as the mother of this boy because she dearly loved the Lord and praised him with much joy. One day while Mary was at home, an angel dressed in white appeared to her, and Mary knelt in wonder at the sight. This messenger sent by the Lord told Mary of God's plan to make her mother of the blessed Savior of all man. Then happiness filled Mary's heart, replacing all her fear. She could not wait to let her future husband, Joseph, hear. As days and months passed quickly by, dear Joseph and his wife 
prepared and waited patiently till God gave his son life. So Mary packed and off they went to Joseph's family town. She rode upon a donkey from, from sunrise till sundown. They went from inn to inn to try and find a place to stay. But all the places were filled up with people who could pay. But finally they found an inn whose owner said he had a place where they could spend the night. Oh, they were both so glad. The owner led the couple to his stable in the back. The animals watched Joseph while he started to unpack. First, Joseph turned a manger filled with hay into a bed where Jesus could stay nice and warm and lay his sleepy head. Then Mary, on that holy night, gave birth to God's own son. This tiny babe would be the prince of peace for everyone. The angel said, I bring good tidings of great joy. Our Savior, Christ the Lord, is here, a newborn baby boy. Then, all at once, more angels filled the sky. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, rang out their cry. Shepherds stood in wonder as the angel choir left them. They started off to see the Son of God in Bethlehem. Inside the tiny stable, wise men gathered round to honor Jesus Christ the Lord. They knelt down on the ground. Then each presented Jesus with a priceless gift of love in humble thankfulness for this best gift from God above. So now you know why we give gifts to celebrate Christmas. We show our love as God with Jesus showed his love for us. On Christmas Day, besides the gifts you give to others to make them glad, do not forget the holy child who in the manger lay. Your gift can be remembering that this is his birthday. The first reading is from Isaiah, the seventh chapter, beginning at the tenth verse. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as she Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mo mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now we will read responsibly from Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, Shine forth that, that are enthroned upon the cherubim. Your 
Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh at us in scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from Romans, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. As the child conceived, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us continue with prayer. Gracious God, our hearts are full of anticipation of Christmas. We celebrate 
your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, your love incarnate entering our lives. Gracious God, may your love enter our lives now through your holy word. May the thoughts and meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you. Amen. The Gospels, we've got four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, they all approach, they all start differently. Um, the Gospel of Mark starts with John the Baptist. We don't even hear about Jesus' birth or childhood or anything. It starts with John the Baptist, and then Jesus comes along as an adult. Um, and it reflects how uh, the moment when the masses find out about Jesus. The Gospel of John has a Christmas story in it, but it's a theological Christmas story. It talks about the theological implications of Jesus being born, that God, God's love entering our world and how the world responds to it. And so you don't hear about Jesus as a baby. You don't hear about wise men or shepherds or Mary and Joseph, but it talks about how the light of God's love comes into the world and dispels darkness and how the world responds to that. The gospel, according to Luke, is the most complete story that we have of, the, of Christmas, um, and it really is centered around Mary's perspective. Um, we hear the story of, of her uh, 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 conceiving the Annunciation when the angel comes to Mary, as our children uh, and the poem uh, showed us in the children's sermon. Um, and uh, it, it talks about uh, the, the, the journey to Bethlehem. It talks about the kings, the wise men coming. Um, the gospel according to Matthew, it's shorter, the Christmas narrative. And it does something that the other Christmas narratives or stories in the Bible don't do. It gives us a, a view of Joseph's perspective. And that's what we have today. Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant and the child is not his. And they are engaged to be married. The man had to be heartbroken. And yet he loves Mary. And the expected thing to do would be to expose her to the community. And the punishment would have been stoning to death for Mary. And that's a brutal punishment. But it's to reinforce the important that, importance that you don't do this. That this is more about just Mary and Joseph or their respective family. This is about the entire community. That, that in those small communities, uh, the relationships between everyone are intertwined and their survival as community is interdependent upon each other. And the marriages are, are half arranged. And so for her to be pregnant out of wedlock and for it to not be Joseph's threatens the well-being. If this, if this behavior becomes accept, acceptable, it tears at the fabric of, of the community and the morals and threatens the community as a whole. And that's why the punishment was so dire. Joseph loves Mary. He doesn't want to see that happen. And so the only alternative that he has, according to the social norms, is to dismiss her, which still is not an ideal solution. Because if he dismisses her, she has to leave the community. She has to leave her family. She has to go out into, oh, out of the community, and, and, and if she is to survive, she would have to go to another community. Status, her position, 
her place and the new community would be at the very lowest rung and would be one of shame nonetheless. She would have her life, but it would be a life that has been turned utterly and completely upside down with nothing. Nothing but broken-hearted solutions. Have you ever been in a situation where you looked at your choices and it seemed like there were no good choices to be had? Have you ever been in a situation where you looked at the choices and there's no good choices to have and, and, and what choices you have in that situation are going to be life-altering no matter what they are. This is not just, you know, what do I buy at the store? Do I go brand, name brand or, 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 or generic? This is entire trajectory of life decisions. Have you ever been in such a situation? Albert Einstein, a quote from Albert Einstein is, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. God looks at humanity. God looks at us, us limited, finite beings. He looks us, at us as individuals. He looks at us and the societies that we create and sees that we and our limitedness often create systems and expectations and norms, ways of acting, and that just life circumstances in general leave us with decisions that, or choices that are limited. Or we get caught in rut making the same choices over and over again, and then we expect different results. Joseph in his heart wants a different result than what his society would leave to him. And the good news is this, that God sends an angel. God sends an angel into Joseph's life in a dream to say, this child that Mary bears is from the Holy Spirit. Marry her. Take her as your wife. Raise the child. Name him Jesus. That this is the one who will save your people from sin. That God enters Joseph's life. God enters our lives through the Christ child. The unexpected solution that defies human expectations and the choices we would have for ourselves. The very nature of his birth to unwed teenage mother in poverty defies the expectations of the world of what a savior should be. The world was looking for a mighty king or prophet or priest. The world expected, Joseph's people expected more of the image of his second coming, Jesus descending on a cloud in might and majesty, not a helpless infant. We are finite, we are limited, we sin. We are often powerless to the world around us. And so often we will make choices over and over and over again, expecting a different result, expecting it to make us happy. And it doesn't. That we can be caught in situations where we look before us and there are no seemingly good choices. And the good news is that God enters our lives and offers a different way, an unexpected way that defies our limited expectations and what we would look to do. 
and challenges us to open our hearts to see it. The angel says, Joseph, there's another way. Open your heart. So, in this season of Advent, as we look forward to Christmas, what are you expecting? Are you expecting? Do you want fulfillment, happiness? Do you want a direction in life? How does your heart ache? Good news is, God enters our lives. That's what we celebrate Saturday evening and next Sunday. But again, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. What does God present to us outside our expectations that op challenges us to open our hearts to new possibilities? Amen.
let us profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for the world that yearns for new hope. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we serve and love confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and how God, in our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the weak work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights, especially Amnesty International. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our helper, Come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hum hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship. And we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel, heal the sick, and speed the recovery, especially for Twila, George, Donna, Beth, Jean, Eric, Hans, Victoria, John, Noah, George, Matt, Amy, and Peter. And those we say out loud are in our hearts. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our hope, you bring life out of death and you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise and bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest need. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us share the peace with one another. If you had not done so before the service, you may do so after afterwards, and that is leave an offering in the offering plate uh, towards the entrance of the sanctuary. Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread and wine and money and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy. Bring heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ as we wait for that day when all your promises will be fulfilled. Sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine down upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.